What's good, good people? Yo! Welcome back with another episode of Brooklyn Boys Radio. You know it, you know it. What's good, man? What's good, my G? What's good? We back for another week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot yeah, of news yeah. going on, a lot of things going on, but you know, first and foremost, Too let me ask happening. you, how was your week? My week was cool, man. My week was cool. Went to that wake this week, so got that out the way. Sad occasion, but otherwise than that, you know, the week was good. Okay. Got okay. a lot of work done, ripping and running. All right, well, that's always a good thing. Week was productive. I mean, my weeks are just usually um, sitting in front of the computer or running out <laughs> to go handle this or that. Um, but the week was productive, you know? A lot yeah. of seeds being planted so the trees can grow later oh, on. Man, let them grow. Please let them grow. <laughs> let them trees grow. <laughs> let them grow. Yeah, so, you know, this is Brooklyn news again. I want to get straight into it, man. Okay, you want to get vibe. straight into it? Yeah, man. Back to the old bishop. Oh, Whitehead, man. Yeah, I saw that video. You saw the video? I saw, I saw, I saw the video, and um, I'm just getting to a point where it's like, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about the guy, man. Well, this is what I I will do say. feel he's being targeted, though. Yeah, this is what I will say. I don't think the incident with the lady that they said he choked, but he really just grabbed her by the neck, I don't think it's his fault. Like, I, I don't think. She had videos before going into the church outside, talking to the police, asking if they protect him, and, you know, she gonna get him, and she going in there. So to me, she had, like, bad intentions already going into church. And, you know, like I said, I always say, just being a church boy myself, nobody ain't supposed to be on that pulpit if they ain't praying, praising, you know what I'm saying? And she was all the way up in the front, pointing, yelling, and screaming. I agree. I agree. But you know what it made me think about when, you know how, like, when we was kids, mm -hmm. and you had that game, where like your friends could get all in your face and they were like, but I ain't touching you though, but I'm not touching you though, but I'm not touching you though, right? So, so the truth is, I mean, you know, she was saying what she was saying. She was provoking him. She was trying to, you know, start a situation, but she didn't touch no one. Yeah, but she was walking over towards, and then full video came out, and she was walking over towards the mother of his child with his baby, with another situation with the baby in her hand. So, I don't care. Man, woman, child, walking towards my woman and my kid, all bitches off. I don't care who it is. I, I understand. She yucky, she get her jaw tapped. I, <laughs> I, I understand. I'll be honest with you. But I think what also <laughs> made it worse, more than him attacking her, was that weird ass face he made. <laughs> I don't think he was, was attacking. Yeah. He escorted her out though. Like no, he, didn't, but, he grabbed but, her, pushed but, her but, to the door. Like let me let me tell you something, man. She was looking for a problem. No, she definitely was looking for a problem. But something I realized, um. And, and, and I'm sure this is something you know, especially once you get in the public eye, right? That's why they give people media training. The mm -hmm. worst thing you can ever do in a situation is look as if you have no self-control. And that's why I brought up that face he made when he was like, nah, right? <laughs> <laughs> because he looked like he lost control. I look at it differently, man. He just a few weeks ago, just, from, just a few weeks removed from somebody else putting a gun in his face, his daughter's face and his wife. I don't know why things keep happening towards the daughter and the wife. That's beyond me, right? But I'm not letting that happen again. It's like PTSD. Somebody else is coming here and going straight to the beeline to your to your family. What are you supposed to do? No, because if he didn't protect her, but we'd have been like people. Everybody would have been like, yo. And that's why I didn't like the comments. Now, now people he, don't care that it's happening to him. I don't care how okay. loud he flashy is. But wait a minute. Now here's another. He a victim. But now here's another question right? Is he putting his family in danger? Because after what happened at the church with his wife mm -hmm. and his child, with the gun being pulled out on them and the church being robbed, why isn't there any security in there? Somebody call he security. should have been able, once she started raising the ruckus, he should have been able to signal to security, get her out of get here. Get out of the church. Period. You're right. This is what I will say, though. I'm going to be honest with you. So the antics with him afterward, that's what I, that's what I don't like. You know, he went, on, he went online. And I don't understand why he keep fighting the public, why he feel like there's a need to keep explaining. Yo, you explain the story, that's, that's it, it. And move on. But he online 45 minutes, 65 minutes, you know, he, he, I don't know, allegedly the guys that he, that supposedly sent this woman. Larry Reed. Yeah, I don't and, know who they are. Uh, and, and, and he one, was calling them, person. like, saying they was gay, they like balls, like, bro, he, he also you wanted a to bishop box, He also wanted to box them. He wanted to box them. <laughs> Yo, you want, he wanted to fight every, Yo, listen, I take the million dollars to fight you, bro. Like, 
I could come up with a million dollars. You want to take the million? I'll take the million. We can I throw hands. <laughs> throw hands. But, but I don't understand. The Bachi want to take it. I don't understand. Like, at some point, you got to conserve yourself because of your position that you in. And yeah, you from the streets, but it's like anybody else we know. If you keep saying, yo, I'm a street, I'm from the streets, we start thinking that you ain't. Like, yeah. there ain't nothing to talk about if you from the streets. But you a bishop. Be a bishop, B. And another thing, too, is, oh, there you go. This is what Styles was talking about. Monty always messing up in the background, dropping things. <laughs> he the king of that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, another, one of the biggest lessons I ever learned with this whole being in the public eye thing is never breathe life into something that you want to die, right? Mm. So what happened, let it die out. Stop talking about it. Like, you're constantly breathing life into this thing that you want to go away. Because each time that you speak about it is the more you give it life and the longer it will last. It happened. Let it die. Stop speaking about it. Bishop Lamore Whitehead, man, if you listening, bruh, leave it alone. Let these things the die. Dollars. Focus on the word <laughs> and do what you do, man. But Shorty did get arrested, though. Oh, she did? Yeah, she got arrested. Gotcha, oh, I didn't even know she, yeah, got, she arrested. got arrested. because she wasn't supposed to be there. And that's the only thing. Wait, I, but I don't understand. How was she not supposed to be there? Because she was antagonizing. She went up there for the problem. Like you went there yelling, screaming, doing all this stuff, provoking the incident. But how can you trespass in the church? I don't know what she got arrested for. She just, oh, they, they just okay. felt the need for her to get arrested for whatever uh, she had partaked in that situation. Well, both got if, if she was there antagonizing him and was there with the malicious motive, then I guess you know, karma's yeah, karma's a ma. Enough is enough, baby. We can't keep going inside the. The house of God, whether y'all feel like he's a bishop or not, he go there. Before the video, he was asking everybody to come to church. This is what he do. Respect the house of God, man. He be preaching the word and disrespect that, man. Stop violating the house of the Lord. You know what I mean? And Bishop, stop wanting to fight everybody. This shit don't make no sense to me. Just because you got muscles don't mean you got to fight, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, a lot of people got something else. Oh, you know Bishop, saying? come on the show. You can slap box. Yeah, you definitely can slap box over here, B. You can slap box. We go, we'll try to hook it up for you. You and Larry Reed, y'all can slap box on the show. Right here, right here. It's a Brooklyn thing. She might as well do it. Spread love, man. It's a Brooklyn way. You'll have home court advantage, Bishop. <laughs> so, in other news, uh, not too funny uh, joint. Um, Ludacris manager uh, Shaka Zulu uh, was arrested and detained for, um, for murder. Um, and I, I don't understand why he was arrested and detained, especially in the stand your ground state. He, you know, surveillance video came out. He was punched in the face and beat up by four dudes and shot in the back during the fire, gunfire. He shot somebody. Unfortunately, somebody did lose their life. But we watched this with Trayvon Martin and, and George Zimmerman. And Tray, Trayvon was a little kid in the stand your ground state, didn't have any weapons, no blows or stone. <laughs> And George Zimmerman got off. This of guy's in jail. George Zimmerman, Zimmerman didn't even get arrested that night. But there's a huge difference in that situation. And I hear you, but it's just crazy when, once again, when it's one of us. But that's what I'm saying. That's the difference. Yeah, it just that's the difference. out. It's surveillance video shows that he was punched first, dropped, repeatedly beat on. I don't know. I couldn't hear the gunshots when they came and when they didn't go. So who shot first? I don't know. Okay. But he was jumped by four men, though, in the video. Okay. And he was shot in his back, um, according to the report that I read. So, you know, let that man go, V. Like, he's protecting himself at this point. But you know, you, you can't, you know, you in the stand your ground state, and you in the open carry state that I don't think you need a license anymore to carry in Georgia. So it ain't like you can't have the gun on you, right? Mm -hmm. So it, I don't understand what the problem is. The After you see the surveillance video, let the man go. The problem is he is black. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you, man, but... If, if you're in a stand-your-ground state, open-carry state, he's not carrying an illegal firearm, he was attacked, he defended himself, there's no reason why he should be charged. But the truth is, we go through, you know, we go through all these complications, and most likely he's probably going to go to court, and hopefully they'll... Give him a bill. Yeah, yeah I, you know, get a bill, not even I, if if not drop the charges, maybe he'll take it to trial and he'll be found not guilty. But it's just crazy that we even have to go through, go through this. that entire process just to be proven innocent. Because I've always said that when it comes to us, huh? Oh, the N come on, the NRA they doesn't come out for us. us. They, they don't came out for Zimmerman, us. though. Of course, they came. <laughs> they out ain't for coming Zimmerman. out for us, though. You know what I mean? So 
we fall into their trap all the time, man. I, like I said, it's unfortunate that somebody lost their life, but it's also unfortunate that somebody has to go to jail for protecting their own life. You know what I'm saying? That don't even make any sense. Well, I always say, don't give somebody a blank check and be mad when you got to cash it. So if you run up on a man, y'all jumping him, y'all beating him, listen, that's an open door. For, any, for anything to happen. Now, that's message mo. No, it's not about message mo. It's the honest <laughs> to God truth. So, so you know, um, I'm, I, I, I always um, feel bad about any type of loss of life, but if you take it upon yourself to do certain things, there's consequences to all actions. And it's that simple. And if that man defended himself and defended his life and he felt like his life was on the line, he had four guys on top of him and they had weapons as well, then so be it. Yeah, I tell people all the time, man, I love Atlanta, right? I love when I come off the airport, it's black people, pictures everywhere. And I love that, you know, it's like black Hollywood, everybody. You mm -hmm. see a lot of people with, with money doing their thing, got their businesses and running around. But Atlanta is also a crazy spot. Like, I've been to Atlanta plenty of times. You go out to the restaurant and somebody pull out a chop out the car. Yeah. It's like, yo, we just go to eat. Why you got that big stick on you? I don't understand. So, you know what I mean? But I don't like the gun thing in Atlanta. Because it's just so open. I always tell people, too, Atlanta's not a state where you fight in. Like, you just don't... You know how in New York you can punch somebody in their face? See, but I also think that... You don't that, want to do that in But I bit. also think that feels odd to you because you grew up in New York. To them, they grew up with that being the norm. Mm -hmm. So for us, where, you know, guns are like so hands-off out here. When you go somewhere and it's like... You see people driving around with guns in their glove, in their glove Yo, compartment like it's nothing. Atlanta. Everywhere you go, somebody has a firearm. Um... I think it feels foreign and strange to us, but for them, it's, it's the norm. Which, which, in all honesty, I feel that it should be the norm because we're programmed into thinking that guns are criminal, right? The only people that have guns are criminals. That's, I know, like, growing up, that's what my mother thought, when the truth is the guns are there for you to defend yourself. I strongly believe that everyone should keep a gun in their home. Especially, so if, especially if you have a family. That's a whole nother debate for another day, but yes, in your home, yes. Um, in the middle of the street, you go to a restaurant, I don't know why you would have a firearm on you if you decide with your family. But like in Atlanta, if you're in a place like an open carry state, yeah, I think you should keep the, the, uh, the hammer on you. Because like I said, Atlanta, you can't go there and like punch nobody in the face. There's no, oh yeah, I'm going to fight you. No, well, you get should, clapped. Well, the truth is, as an adult, you shouldn't be punching people in the face anyway. No, nah, but I feel like people got to get back to punching people in the face. Yeah, but... Because it's better than the gun place. At least, at least you live to fight another day. But you don't always live to fight another day because the truth is once you put your hands on a man, that's a blank check for him to write whatever amount, amount on. I hate and you, And it man. might be an amount that your ass can't cash. So what I'm I saying you, is but you once you put your hands... No, because listen, you might punch a man in the face. He might decide, well, I want to stab you. You might punch a man in the face. He might decide, well, I want to shoot you. Well, you just asked Bishop because, to slap box you. That's that's slap box. That's that's between that's between two men that that agree to to do this. But that's what I'm saying. When you just punch a man in the face out of nowhere, you opening the door for him to do whatever. Listen, man. Listen. Don't, don't fight, fight nobody in Atlanta. Because, like I always shot. say, keep your hands to yourself. Because you never know how that person may be feeling that day. You know, one day they may fight you. The other day they may shoot you. I hate you. You man. never know. Well, if we talk about fighting. It was a fight this week. <laughs> um, I was looking on the internet, you know me, um, with Tory Lanez allegedly attacking August, August I seen Alcina. Him. I seen a video. I guess August didn't want to give him a pound mm -hmm. uh, for whatever he must have said or something or didn't say. I don't know what happened. But Tory came out and was like, yo, I ain't do nothing to him. Yeah, I saw, I saw something, uh, but, an exchange he had with academics where he was saying that he yeah, didn't he, do it. He didn't do it. And then at the same time, I had saw... You know, uh, Rip Michaels, because they all on tour, mm -hmm. kicked Tory off the tour. Yeah, for, I saw that. For allegedly beating up uh, August, August Alcina. Alcina. And then, you know, the jokes came, Will Smith sent them or something like that. Oh, Will Smith sent them something? You <laughs> no, lying. Will Smith oh. sent Tory to Alcina. Will, Will Smith sent them something for that's, us? It's, it's a joke, man. Oh, okay. Thank you, Monty. It's a joke. Listen, sometimes I'm slow. <laughs> but, you know, listen, man, I don't understand... First of all, I seen the pictures of August. He was like in the elevator, kind of slumped over with the blood dripping from his mouth. Why y'all dudes is promote? Like, 
first of all, why y'all dry snitching? If y'all fall and you got jumped, then go beat. Once again, go fight him again. How about this? But why are you taking pictures leaking? It goes back to what you said about balance. Now the R&B singers are gangster, bro. Like, it's crazy, right? Like, even the R&B singers are going at it like, 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 they, like they thugs, man. Like, I mean, and don't get me wrong. Whether you sing R&B, whether you wear leather pants, jump up and down, hump the floor like Joe see, it doesn't matter. You're still a man, you know? But um, I just don't get why this whole culture has to be so goddamn violent. Well, this is what I will say. Tory got an open case. Mm-hmm. And if he did, in fact, do something I heard something the police to, are looking into that, too. Do something to August? Bro, it wasn't that deep. He didn't want to give you a pound. You got an open case. Fight your case, B. Like, you don't need another charge for you to go sit down. Now you got to fight the case behind the bars and all. Like, you don't need another charge. It ain't that deep, man. I don't understand. Like, I know he's young, but he got to be smarter than that. His team got to be smarter than yeah. that. Like, you can't egg that type of foolery on. You got an open case for it's, shooting, it's, it's, allegedly shooting somebody. Like, especially with the stigma that's surrounding him right now after the whole incident with the, with the whole Megan Thee Stallion. And it affects thing. your money. <clears throat> you got kicked off the tour. It affects your money. Yeah. Ever since the case with him and Homegirl, Tory ain't been rocking on the radio like that. Things ain't, you know, shows ain't been going off like that. Now you on tour, chill out, get your money, fight your case, and fight August another day. You know what I'm saying? Fight the case first, fight August 2nd. There you <laughs> fight, go. Fight August and September, but that's what he did. He maybe should have went to December. There you go. I think his case is, it starts in December. You know what I mean? Best, best wishes to you, Tory. Best of luck, man, with everything that you fighting. I don't know. Maybe you got a Napoleon complex. Uh, he is short. But you, yeah, but, yeah, he is short. <laughs> but you know, yo, just calm down, bro. God gave you blessings. You out there. You making money. You got opportunities, man. Sometimes you just got to let... Things slide. Every battle ain't worth fighting. 100%. Yo, so check this out, man. I also was reading earlier this week that the STD rate is going up like crazy throughout the whole United States. So we have an epidemic of just that happening. They saying that HIV has gone up, syphilis has gone up. They said they had 1.6 million cases of chlamydia. Clap, clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, they clap, clap, but they going off and on. It's, it's old right now. It's applause all over the place. So they saying that's 2021. The, the uh, you know, that's from 2020 was uh, 21 results. Those ain't even 2022 numbers. So, so check this out. I just think it's because of the pandemic. Niggas was just in the crib, just jumping from crib to crib, getting ass, and you know, just putting it all around. It's either that or dudes thought the meant they had to use protection. I don't know, but it's crazy. Y'all listen, y'all wrap up. I remember when I was a kid, right? We used to double up on iPod condoms. I don't know if you can do that, though. But we used to double up because you didn't want to catch Doug. Y'all better start doubling up out here. Uh, huh? What? What no. you say? Well, I've never had an STD in my life. You said if I've caught anything. He said if you ever caught anything. I've never had an STD in my life. I've seen some dudes that caught some Thank stuff. Thank the Lord. I don't even want to talk about it, man, because you're making me itch right now. Yeah, listen. <laughs> listen. You're making me itch. I'm scared, man. Look, it's winter time coming right now. No more sneaky links. Cuffing season. I'm about to start cuffing. Because it's about, it's about to be that weather where yeah. it's like, I'm not coming. Listen, once I get home, I am not coming back outside. Yeah, so listen, come with your paperwork to my crib and we can, we can lay up all winter. Uh. <laughs> we can lay up all winter. Another news, I seen that um, New York City governor started, to, uh, they want to start putting surveillance camera inside the subway cars. You think about that? I think that's a good idea. I think um, maybe that'll serve as a deterrent because right now, crime has uh, has risen on the subways. But I also think that it has a lot to do with mental illness. It has to do with the fact that a lot of people are homeless. Um, like people out here losing their minds, man. You know, a lot of people couldn't deal with the pandemic mentally. A lot of people couldn't deal with the isolation. A lot of people couldn't deal with the fact that they lost their jobs. A lot of people going through hard times. You know, and the truth is that when there's hard times, crime goes up. Well, I feel bad because what's going to happen to all my dancers in the train? I actually like to dance in the train. Beat. Like, do they see you on camera and now they, they yeah, showtime? Do they, they, do they identify you and come after you? I said, I don't know what the cameras are exactly for. I heard what they're going to do is for the dancers, they're going to put those surveillance videos on YouTube. <laughs>
<laughs> Yo, this guy's crazy. But I will say, I was on the train not too long ago. You know, I'm fortunate that not to have to take the train. You know, thank God for that this that often. But it was like zombies everywhere on the train, man. I ain't never seen it like that. It was people sleeping in every chair. Everybody was standing up. Like it was, it was just, it was different than I ever seen it in my life growing up. Well, that's probably because you haven't been on the train in years, because that's what the train is like every day. <laughs> nah, man. Nah, it was. I've seen people sleep on the train, but I've never seen this section taken, this section taken, and two in the back taken. Like I've never seen that in one car. Yeah, because I mean, I've gotten on the train, and I get on the train, and I'm like, wait a minute, why is this? part of the car so bunched up and I look in the other half of the car is empty and then I smell something and then I realize it's because a really really smelly homeless man is sleeping and we gotta do something with the homelessness in New York City and all over because yo I was in California oh California California is is bad it's different it's bad yeah it's different yeah California is real I mean I think California has one of the um the biggest homeless on populations like Skid Skid Row Row. but it's not even just Skid Row because the home a lot of homeless people migrate to California simply because they have good weather all year round so they don't have to deal with these harsh New York winters. You know, because a lot of the homeless die during the winter. How they get to California? What do you mean? If they homeless, how they get to California? Ask them. Maybe they take the bus. I don't know. Well, or they or they hike. Well, we I mean, or they um they hitchhike. Nobody hitchhiking. There's too many people disappearing for people to be hitchhiking. Yo, bro, it's... you know what's so crazy? I was getting on the BQE the other uh-huh. day. And I swear to you, there was a Hasidic Jew hitchhiking. I was like, this is crazy. I've never seen it. Do they? Yeah, because I, 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 I saw, I saw, I saw a Hasidic Jew. Like in real Hitch- life. Yeah, in real life. Monty said they always do that. They're not jumping in my car. <laughs> Wait, where'd you take them? Where'd you take them? <laughs> Martin Luther King would have been proud. Where'd you take them, Monty? Somewhere over there, right there in your shipper. Whatever the fuck that shit called. Okay. This guy's crazy. <laughs> I ain't never seen that. Now, what? my question, if you were hitchhiking, you think they'd pick you up? Fuck no, not robbing. Oh, God, here we go. I might even get to that. But we gonna have... It's Legal gonna, check! Yeah, it, it's going to be a little bit more even crazier because New York City is getting homeless people by the droves every single day. My homegirl has a high position in um, in the shelter system, and she's telling me like a lot of Ecuadorians, a lot of, people, a lot of people from um, Mexico are coming across the borders, and what they're doing, they're going to states like uh, uh, Mexico and um, Mexicans Cal- are going to not Mexico. Mexico. I'm sorry, states <laughs> like states like uh, Texas. I'm sorry, Texas, Florida, and you know the governors has been sending them. Oh yeah, bus to New York, bus loads to. So every day she said he even sent a bunch to um Kamala Harris's barbecue, barbecue her, her house. What are you talking about? Bro? <laughs> and I thought that was crazy. The governor of Texas do that. That was disrespectful. That was way disrespectful. Yeah. And they wouldn't. They listen, listen. Y'all may say I'm always pulling that card, but they wouldn't have did that to a uh a white woman, a po- a politician of the other persuasion. This is all that I'm saying. That's crazy. I don't know how you drop 50 homeless people to the vice president doorstep like but he probably did that because you know she wears tims because y'all voted her in the office because she wears timberlands we did it we did it joe <laughs> whatever b <laughs> and, and and not only that the governor of florida put 50 immigrants on a plane to walk his video adios because you know new york city uh massachusetts a bunch of California or sanctuary states. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even the mayor from New York City, Mayor Adams, I guess him and the, uh, the mayor from Texas got into a beef. And he was like, yo, talking about the immigrants that's coming in there. So he's basically like, yo, all right, since you want them, we're going to send them there. So they've been sending them all over to all the sanctuary states throughout <clears> the state, which is a good thing because before they was locking them up, putting them in cells. But the bad thing is, too, I got another friend of mine that works in a charter school and they get kids by the boatload every single day. Mm-hmm. And the kids don't have their parents. Usually it's given to somebody to just say, yeah, I know or I know her, like a friend of the family type mm-hmm. of thing. And sometimes these kids don't speak English. They don't speak, they don't speak any, uh, they should get all type of kids, Russian kids, um, Ecuadorian kids. And what happens is they don't have any teachers to teach these kids. But who's sending these kids with no parents? 
it's better to get get them in the household than keep them in the system, I guess. But and look, better they send the immigrants to Martha's Vineyard than they send them to Brownsville. Oh no, they there too. Oh, they in Brownsville too. Oh, uh. <laughs> they everywhere, B. So. You know, one thing I will say, a lot of immigrants that do come to this country, though, they do work hard enough, most of them, and they come up. You know, our family are immigrants. You know, yeah. we came, my parent, my, my grandmother came to this country with something we call wash and put on clothes. Where she had to wash her clothes out every night and go get up and hopefully they was dry in the morning to go find a job. And she brought five of her kids up here, bought a house, and all her kids are successful. So, you know what I mean? This country is made up of immigrants, so they don't belong to nobody but the immigrants, because not even the white folks that came here from Europe, they're all immigrants. They're, we're all immigrants in this country. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's just sad, but I hope, um, you know, they find peace here and, you know, find a, a new way of life, and you know what I mean? And, um, but the political game that's being played with the immigrants it's not right. between the, the, the Democrats and the Republicans is, is terrible. So immigrants, if you're seeking refuge or shelter, you can feel free to go to Styles' house. <laughs> Um, I will make sure to put the address at the bottom of the screen. Exactly. Feel free. Guy's Styles. Crazy. He's on one today, B. What's wrong with you, man? Anyway. Yeah, but this messed up what they're doing, man, to all of the immigrants. You know what I mean? So enough love, best wishes out there to all those that's trying to find their way. You know, whether adult, child, God willing, man. Yeah, be kind, man. If you see somebody that's in need, please give them some paper, some food, something to drink. You know, we all, we all got to take care of one another in some house, some way. So be kind when you see somebody. And this was a message from Pastor Styles. <laughs> I hope you liked it. And on that note, we're going to break off to a, to a skit or something, man. Go check this out. We'll be back with more Broken yeah. Boys Radio. G from. I used to sell him kicks. Kicks. <laughs> so you still get sneakers? I can use some J's. Nah, I don't sell sneakers no more, man. You don't sell sneakers no more. Of course you don't. <sighs> you ask a lot of questions. Yo, what you got on? Yo, what you doing? G might be your homie, but I don't know you. And I don't know you. You bugging out, man. Wildin'. Boy. <laughs> man, look at this. I don't even need you, because I got the J's right here. I need J's. Are you gonna send me to work or what, man? No, take it easy. And where's the money anyway? Yo, it's in the car. Yo, I've been ripping and running all day. I haven't even stopped to get a slice of pizza. I do not have time for no bullshit, bro. Bro, nobody bullshitting you. I don't know you. And I don't know you, but I know for a fact G vouched for me just like he vouched for you. All right. I'm going to get the bread out the car. How right, you do that? It's in the trunk. All the money in there? Every bit of it. All right. What the fuck? 
tiny. Yo, boy behind us. Oh, shit. Somebody must have set you up, man. What's up, what's up? Yeah, we back. Yeah, I hope y'all enjoyed that, man. You know what I mean? I don't even know what y'all just saw, so I can't even comment on it. <laughs> Come on, man. This guy's crazy. Yo, but anyway, man, I, you, you all won the day. You smoked something before you came in? Nah, I'm just really hot in this hoodie. Oh, yeah. It's hot here today. The AC's not working today. Woo! But check this out. So I know you, you know, a TV guy. I like to watch certain shows. I see that 50 Cent is um, parting ways with stars. How you... What you think about that? I think he had a good run, you know. Uh, most, I mean, I don't consider 50 a creative. He's more like an executive. But um, most people don't like to be pigeonholed in one situation because you kind of get typecasted. 50's kind of been creating the same show over and over and over and over again, but he's had great success with it. But uh, I think it's a good move. I mean... He got his Just Do It stars. He definitely made his mark, and now it's time to move on and kind of uh, find different paths. Expand. So, I got a question, though. I'm, I, so stars still own all the content that they put up there, so he leaves all of that behind? Yeah, I mean... So if they go on to another season of, uh, you know, Kanan and all that, so he's not a part of that anymore? Or well, how does that work? All, de know? all depending on his deal. Uh, most likely... Mm. He would be kept on as some type of consultant. I think that he'll probably be receiving royalties off of whatever oh, no, shows they do in perpetuity, so, yeah, like definitely. forever. Uh, so even if they do a spinoff of any show, being that he was linked to the original creator, he's probably going to get some type of um, some type of check from so it. He just, but he, he doesn't have to be there. He don't have to be there. He could just go somewhere else and do a whole other set of shows at another network. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's okay. just like Courtney Kemp. I'm sure that Courtney Kemp wasn't on hand. With, with force, right? Mm -hmm. But being that it's a spinoff of a show that she created, she sees money off of that. Uh, well, look, man, he came up. <laughs> so his next bag is probably most likely gonna be a real big bag. So, you know what I mean? He, he proved himself. He proved that he could put number one shows in the time slot. So, look, good luck to 50, man. What you thought about the, um, the little TJ and uh, Don Q? I think Don Q smoked TJ, I don't know, V. You know, it's hard for me to get into music nowadays. I heard, I heard, uh, you know, both tracks and um, Little TJ kind of reminded me of like a teddy bear in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> listening to, uh, listening to him, listening, uh, 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 yeah, like, like listening to him on Many Men. He's on one today. No, I'm, telling you. I'm not on one. It just. It just, it just, it just, it just wasn't convincing for me. Like it was just like. Eh. I just felt like it was a lot of dry snitching in the in the music. You know what I mean? Apparently he kind of blaming a boogie the whole. Uh, yeah, but you know what I mean? High bridge camp. What's, for the whole what's shooting. that's that's the same dry snitching Pac did. Oh, like man. Pac, no Pac did get a whole song. Fans. No, listen, you got get whoever. Oh, truth, man. truth is truth. Truth is truth. Pac did a whole song talking about Biggie shot me, bro. That's dry snitching. And back in back in ninety five, ninety six, mm. I was saying that like, bro, this dude is you telling, homie. Like, it is what it is. But you know, Pac's a great actor, and people love his antics. But anyway. I like pop, man. No, I, I like, like Pac I, too. I like him better than Big, but yeah, I, I like pop. Man. I like Pac too. I like his music, like. I love Pac music. You understand what I'm saying? And I think Pac and Big are two totally different type of rappers. I love Big for what Big do, and I love Pac for what Pac do, but Definitely. it still doesn't change the fact that, once again, I separate the music from the artist, and it doesn't change the fact that Pac was an actor. He was. It is what it is. Listen, man, and Pac was dry snitching all over all of those songs. That's so, not what I asked him about, but Big Up the Don Q. Big Up the Don Q. He did his thing. He, he killed, he killed uh, the freestyle. Um... And I hope y'all brothers can keep it on wax, B. I love, I love when dudes battle each other. Um, I come from that, that era when people could put stuff on wax and a hundred people don't get shot or stabbed from it. So keep it on wax. I thought it was good, a good sparring match, but Don Q won it for me. High bridge. <laughs> what up, my son? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my son from, yeah. 
So, you know, I was watching First Take and Undisputed today. Those are my shows, you know, my morning shows. I got to watch my sports. And I seen that the Phoenix Sun owner. Oh, Robert Sarver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, I don't know nothing about sports. He told me that, so he told me to say <laughs> it. <laughs> anyway, like I said, he, he's selling the team, the Phoenix Sun team. And um, I don't know if we spoke about it before, but he had used, like, the, the N-word a couple of times in the past. And he had some misogynistic things to say to women and some things that he done. So they had to sp- Yeah, I say those. He can't say it. So, um, yeah, they uh, had suspended him for a year. hmm uh-huh and gave him a $10 million fine. Um, they were supposed to, I felt like it was going to do more, but I think like Mark Cuban had put on a statement before, like that's going to open Pandora's box because he was ready to snitch on. On everybody. On everybody. Because they all do it. You know what I'm saying? They're going to snitch on everybody. But, you know, um, a lot of sponsors, PayPal was pulling out of, uh, the, uh, out of, out of sponsorship from the Suns. Um, Adios. The, uh, the minority owner was like, yo, you got to go. Get LeBron James put out a tweet this week. Um, your man uh, put out a tweet, even though he played for the team. Um, oh. oh, Chris Paul. Chris Paul put out a tweet. So homeboy was like, look, man, I'm going to sell that team and the, end of, and, uh, the NWA team that you have. I think it's called the Mercury's. He got so he's shipping out. All I want to say, I hope y'all give a chance to a black owner to come in or a black group, to, a majority group to come in to take over the Suns, you know what I mean? So we can have more black ownership since most of the players are 90% black in the NBA. So we need more black owners in the NBA. And maybe we won't have no more Robert Sarvis, you know what I mean? Well, you got to find a black billionaire who's willing to um, to actually purchase the team or, you know, a black investment group to do so. I don't think that it's as simple as just saying find a black owner. Like, you have to find the right owner. But, nah, um, they out there, bro. No, they, I mean, they're definitely out oh, there. Oh, they're definitely out there, but, you know, these guys get voted in. Mm-hmm. But sometimes they don't get voted in. No, of course. So when we you, need to vote. Whoever's in charge of that, the, own, the, own, the other owners have to come together and pick, like, who's the next majority owner. It's a privilege. I'm saying to you guys, yo, pick a black person because there's plenty of them out there. It's just that we don't get voted in. We I watch sports all day. Styles wants to get voted in. <laughs> If I had it, I would. As far as... <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was also uh, going through the whole thing with the academic and um, LL Cool J. Uh, Academics is a culture vulture in another sense. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's a lame who actually does not embody no part of what we represent, and he exploits it. Mm. That's what he does. And the truth is, he doesn't give a damn about the culture, bro. He don't care about none of that. He well, can we get to what he said about the culture? Oh, yeah. He Basically, said, he was getting he said he, he called He called the old heads dusty. He called the old head rappers yeah. dusty. Which I, I totally have to disagree with him, man. You know, and they was the forefathers. These guys gave me hope and dream to even do what I do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to come home and just watch video music box or listen to Hot Tracks or Bobby Simmons. And I, you know... I was always wanting to be one of these guys, you know what I'm saying, growing up in the 70s and the 80s. So for him to say that, yeah, they didn't make the money because there was no business model at that time for them to make money, you know what I'm saying? So they laid the foundation and, and, and paved the way for all of us that's in the music career. So I thought, even for him to a certain degree, you know what I'm saying? So I thought that was a little cheap of him to even say that, disrespectful too, you know what I mean? But it, it annoys me because a guy like him couldn't, and you know this, Styles, couldn't have even survived in the industry back in those days. Yeah, he, got a, he definitely got his jaw cracked. He the guy his jaw cracked multiple times. And, and look, I have no problem with the new era, but my problem is what I liked about our time was that everybody played their position. Mm. You understand? You had the dudes who had the nine to five, they were squares, and they still hung out with the, dude in the, the dudes in the streets, but they knew when to keep their mouth shut and when to join the conversation. Mm. You understand? And what I can't stand these days is dudes that aren't built like that, man, that run their mouth like they are. And then the second you deal with them like, like a man, all they're going to do is call police. Like, oh, bro, if I put my hands on you, you got beat up. Is there really a need to press charges? Like, we two men. <laughs> There's no need to press charges. Take the ass open and keep it moving. This is the same guy that was talking about earlier. Yo, 
Everybody ain't gonna take the ass with it. Oh, listen, ass. I didn't say I, I didn't say don't I, listen, I didn't say don't come back however you want to come back. I, I just said don't call the boys. I, I just said don't call the boys. You know, um, like I said, that that was a foul statement, man. Academic career is built off the backs of these guys. You know what I'm saying? Jay Z said it best. He trying to take back what they took from the cold crush. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So um, he damn sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he took he took more than enough. Jay Z probably should cut them a check. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, but academic, you was definitely out of pocket. You you bro. out of pocket, bro. hundred percent out of pocket. And I'm and I'm hundred percent out of pocket. And and I'm gonna tell you, man. Like my suggestion to you is quit while you ahead, cause you keep getting away with it. But I'm telling you, bro. But that's why I keep doing it. Yeah, right? but sooner or later, sooner or later, there's going to be somebody that's going to say, you know what? I'll eat that misdemeanor. I'll eat that assault charge, and they going to deal with you. So I'm, I wonder if I wonder if he come outside. Like, do he go outside? Cause I ain't never really seen most, him outside. Nah, most likely he do, bro. The world is different. The world is different. You know what I mean? It's crazy, man. But listen, man, shout out to all the guys that paved the way, man. I, you know, listen, if you don't appreciate y'all, I definitely appreciate y'all. Um, we appreciate y'all. Definitely. It wouldn't be no me without guys like you. I wouldn't even expire to do the things that I've done. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. I used to just... G-Rap, Big Daddy Kane. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Yo, you know, when I was growing up, you know, uh, we had fat boys that was from East New York. It was in East New York. And we had T-Funk. You know what I'm saying? And I used to aspire to be like these dudes. Go outside and watch the videos while they were shooting the videos. It was like, yo, I got to do that one day. You know. That's where you learned to do the worm? Definitely. You know, I, I bust one right here. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> Yo, him and Monty is all one the Go ahead, I, do the world. I ain't never seen it. I got that have a little, man. I wanted to pop out, okay. B. Okay. I wanted to pop out. I ain't academic, B. Me, you can shoot five right here. Me, you, and the bishop. Who, who, said I wanted, five. who said I wanted to fight? Oh, look, the ladies came in the house. Look at the titties. Oh, titties. Titties. <laughs> How old is this man? <laughs> look at the... Oh! Okay. We back, we back. Yes, sir. So, Mo, let me ask you a question, man. You got TikTok? I, I just started a TikTok last week for this show. Oh, I, I got TikTok, but it ain't, it's not on my phone, so I can't find it. I got to re-put it back on my phone. Yeah, I, I just didn't like the way it sounded. Like, I got TikTok. It sounded weird to me. Like, that's why I never downloaded it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about it. But it got a lot of information on TikTok. And apparently, it has some information about people... Uh, Taking NyQuil and cooking chicken with it. What kind of place? No greater is sound this? of the time. Of how stupid people are. No greater sound Yo, of the time. Why would you do that, B? Because like, you because you saw it on TikTok. That's why that's why the well, world would do it. The FDA came out and said that's a no-go. I guess it's changing the uh, the molecular structure of the NyQuil and it could make you higher if you eat the chicken. I really do think that that's a representation of the intelligence of the generation that we're dealing with <laughs> when the FDA has to tell you that cooking chicken with NyQuil is a bad idea. Yeah, I, I don't even know what it is. That's bedtime chicken? Like, what is that, man? Bedtime like, chicken. Bedtime chicken. I don't want no bedtime chicken, B. And no, no brothers need to be eating no bedtime chicken. We get nigger writers already for me and chicken, so we definitely need no, need no extra dose of nigger writers. You Yo, know what but, I'm saying? But it's, it's just so crazy that we live in a world that people will really see people cooking chicken with NyQuil on TikTok and then go do it. Why would you try that? Genius, I, genius, I, I, genius. I that, it, that's, that behooves me. Once again, no greater <laughs> sign of the times. Yeah, but you know, listen, I want to big up all my Jill brothers. You know what I'm saying? There was a sick uh, Shout out to brother. all the dudes behind the wizard. Yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely a, a CO in there, a female CO that just got arrested. For, la for relaxing all the brothers, for lack of a better term, you know what I'm saying? Relaxing all the yeah, brothers. Yeah, she was having sexual uh, relations with some of the brothers in, in the jail. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. It's releasing the stress, B. I'm saying, you know, taking care of the inmates. <laughs> Listen, man, I don't find nothing wrong with it. They should have kept on the job, man. They probably had less fights in it. <laughs> Listen. Oh, peanut correctional. Mon. <laughs> Uh, uh, Monty just threw us off with a joke that and it, missed. It, 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 all the way missed. All the way missed. I don't know what that was about. Oh, man. But yeah, you know, uh, that's so crazy. You know, to risk your job, to risk your livelihood. I don't know if she has a family, if she's married, if she has children, but to risk your livelihood. She got to be real lonely at home, B. I don't know. I don't know. 
hope dudes just snitch right, right out because they wasn't getting none. Most, you know most, most likely they did. Safari was a hater. Most likely he they did. He ain't getting none and now he mad. I ain't getting none. You because ain't crazy it, That's how most female correctional officers that are sleeping with inmates, that's how they get caught. Is that either a jealous inmate who knows about it comes forward or the inmate they're sleeping with because maybe she didn't put money in his commissary or, or, or put money in his account for the phone. You know, he tries to blackmail and he Listen, puts it I'd out there. I would never snitched on a coochie. <laughs> never. Styles would never snitch on a coochie. So if you're a CEO never. and you ever see him, you know, you're Not good. Telling. Yeah, but you know, on uh, another note, I was uh, also looking at the new Apple uh, emojis they had. They had the sisters with the bonnets on there, the brothers with the do rags. So how you feel? Like we being rep like you, this representation for the bonnet girls and the do rag guys. I mean, it's inclusion, right? Like we got it's inclusion. I, 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 mad at it. Yeah, but why don't they have a white emoji with a trailer? They probably do. I don't know. No, they don't. I don't know if they got one, bro. It, it, no, what, what, what I mean by that is why, why is it that every... You know this is going to get on more nerve. I'm just letting y'all know this no, right now. But why don't wanna why this is it that every representation of us has to be the... And I'm not even going to say the worst version of ourselves because just because a black woman has a bonnet, that does, that's, that's not a bad thing. Like That's mm -hmm. what they wear to go to sleep at night. But I'm just saying that as far as um, how we're depicted to the world, right? that's the perception. You know, it's, it's, it's another perception that's put out there of us. You have to understand that there's a large part of America where um, we are very scarce, right? And these people don't really interact with us. And their perception of who we are is through what they see on the phone, what they see on the Internet, what they see on the television. So I'm just saying, why is it that whenever there's a representation of us, and I'm not going to say whenever, but a lot of times when there's a representation of us, it has to be something that's subpar. Well, look, I didn't take it to be that crazy, which I already know is going to be crazy. What's going to happen out here and the, and the backlash from it is going to be crazy. I look at emojis, they're supposed to be fun, right? And people use emoji to describe all kind of things. So I, to me, I thought it, it was just a fun emoji type of thing. And, you know, the girls can have fun with it. The guys can have fun with the do-rags. I didn't look at it that big. So let me ask you a question because... Mm -hmm. I know most emojis come in different shades, right? They have an Asian representation, a black representation, a white representation. So for this yeah, new know. emoji of the what black woman with the bonnet, me, is there a white version of it? I don't know. It didn't come out yet, so I can't even tell you. Okay. Because so I'm, I'm just curious. Mo, ho hopefully, hopefully I do that for Mo, please. I'm just They're curious because all the images I've seen has only been the, uh, the black emoji. So yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, does it come in the white version? I don't know. But look, man, we're going to go to another skit, and I hope y'all enjoy this one, man. I don't know what it is because we haven't even shot it yet. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> we'll be back with more no, Brooklyn Boys Radio. <laughs> I'm tired of these dudes swearing they got game when their game is really shit. You know, like, trying to claim exclusive privileges when they banging out more than one chick. Like, we believe their lies, their fables their stories, like you fooling somebody. Duke, your stories make me yawn, they bore me. But I play along and have you label me that dense chick. Cause everything he's saying, I'm looking in his eyes, listening to every sentence, very attentive. When they already know what the deal is, why he looking at me like I'm baseball, with bases he plan on stealing. That's why I am officially declaring a pussy protest. It's time to put the cooch on strike. Stop giving up the goods to these dudes that don't want to step their game up and come at us right. Stop accepting calls after 10 p.m. Ain't shit open at that time. He don't want to take you nowhere. He want to come to your crib and bend up your limbs. Stop dealing with dudes that ain't trying to better themselves and progress. Fuck their complexion, hair texture, eye color, and how well they make dress. And how they approach you like, what up, ma, what's good? Not a damn thing if you can't teach me shit. Uplift your community and relocate me up out the hood. When's the last time you read a book or even a paragraph? And I ain't talking about the caption in the magazine disclosing the measurements of shorty's breast, waist, and ass. I mean something mentally stimulating and enlightening. The effort ways dudes get ass these days is frightening. We ain't never gonna rise as a people. The only thing rising is his penis that stick deep in you. Do you realize the power we possess? Why do you think dudes get shape ups by cars and make sure the outerwear stay fresh, get their diesel on to attract us, to get in our thongs? But 99.999% of the time we don't even come because you don't know how to use this song. This dick game's dead wrong. Fuck your swag, fuck this diggy about fuck your style. 
and his hard rock act claiming he's staying a block grinder with guns cocked acting wild. Most of the time Duke is broke. He don't even have a right to pop a collar and stay holding his manhood. Nigga, you a boy, can't even buy a bag of weed for $5 with a mind that's stagnated. With low self-esteem so everything he do is over-exaggerated. So what we need to do is use our switch to invoke change. Stop giving up samples cause Duke got diamonds in his chain or 94 inch rims. Yeah, that's an exaggeration. I'm just saying some dumb shit you probably hear coming from him. He ain't spent top dollar for his clothes. He went downtown to the bootlegging district. So worried about his image, you don't even acknowledge the possibility of a shit being counterfeit. Don't buy you a drink on the title him to no ass. If he gets you pregnant, he'll probably leave you struggling and stranded. Make sure he got benefits. Don't accept nobody smiling in your face unemployed and empty handed. And don't make him think he can buy you with gifts. He only looking at your backside and how you pat a bra give you that extra lift. You would jump off a bird, a skank, a chick to dig out. Ain't no talking or cuddling afterwards. He put his dick back in his boxes getting dressed and dipping out. So bat your eyes. Bite your bottom lip, but whatever you do, just don't give up the click. Use the cooch's bait, continue to make him wait. And if you ever give him some, he gonna devalue like a hostage. Fuck moving you out the hood, he gonna move you out the state and shower you with affection because we'll see that it takes more to keep you than just his erection. Sorry. And we're back. I hope you enjoyed that, even though we didn't know what we shot. We but... really don't know what it is yet, <laughs> but I bet you it was good. <laughs> So check this out. Let me ask you a serious question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Talk to some um, young ladies this week. This segment is called Superman is Not Dead. Oh, okay, that's, that's what it's called. There you go. I just made it up. Superman is not you dead. You know the question I'm asking. How you, all right, cool. But anyway, this relationship. So if, um, if a young lady moves you in her house. First of all, no young lady's moving me into her Listen house. to what I'm saying to you. A young lady moves you in your, her house. Should she still pay bills? Or if you move her into your home, should she still pay bills? Okay. Um, I'm not big on moving into a woman's house. Uh, and, and it's simply because I think it's somewhat a setup for failure. People have a tendency that when you move into their space, no matter how much you contribute, it never really becomes yours. Because of that, I have an issue with that. The closest, the closest situation I've ever had to anything like that, years ago, I had broken my leg. I had got hit by a car and the doctor said I wouldn't walk for like two years. So when I was leaving the hospital, my mother told me, she was like that I should go live with my girlfriend at the time, right? I was kind of against it because I wasn't ready to move in with her. And I just felt like if I went to stay there for a couple of months, in her mind, she would assume that we're living together. And when I was ready to go back home, it would be an issue. But my mother convinced me, she was like, just go, let her take care of you. Because, you know, my mother was old at the time. She couldn't take care of me the way that I needed to be taken care of. So when my girl came to pick me up from the hospital, the first thing I actually did was I told her to stop by the house, stop by my house. And she took me to my, she took me to my house and I came out with my crutches. I went in the house. And the first thing I did was I gave her, I gave her the rent for the, I, well, I gave her the mortgage because she had a condo. I gave her the mortgage for the first two months, mm. right? And she was like, no, you don't have to do that. And I said, no, I do. And the reason I do is because when you help a man, he's always going to help you help him. You mm. understand? I just feel that a lot of times we want respect as men, but we don't want to carry ourselves in the way that is required for us to receive that respect, right? So when I was younger, I used to think that it was okay to split bills half and half with a woman if y'all live together. But now that I've grown older and I've grown wiser, I've come to realize that if you truly want your woman to respect you, right, then you're going to take care of things. And it's simply because if I was living by myself, I would have been paying the whole thing anyway. You know, um, I just think that women are wired in a way that it kind of makes it difficult for them to truly respect the man if he's not taking care of things. I don't think it's, it's, it's all the way fair, right? Because to be a man is to go to war every day for the people you care about, fully equipped with the knowledge that had the tables been turned, they would not do the same for you and to be okay with it, mm. right? Because a woman's loyalty is pretty much shown by messing with you and only you, while a man's loyalty is shown by being willing to die for you, right? So it's definitely not even scales, but I do believe that if a woman moves in with you, 
you take care of what you've always been taken care of. And if you move in with her, you know, you handle your responsibilities, man. You take care of what, what you're supposed to take care of because that's what just comes with operating in a way that's going to um, keep you respected. Well, I would agree with you some parts, but on another side, I wouldn't agree. I come from, you know, my, my, my stepfather and my father, I watched them take care, take care of all the bills, primarily in the household. But that's a whole totally different time that we lived in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can really function in a household off of one income. Today, you can't even get an apartment if you don't make 40 times your rent. You know what I'm saying to you? Um, and I get what you're saying because in my house, I live alone. My bills are, <laughs> we don't even talk about yeah, like, the cost. Well, my bills are astronomical. It's astronomical, right? And so I do that on my own now. So if a woman live with me, I don't need her to come. If she came in the house that I own, I don't need her to per se pay the mortgage because I pay my mortgage already, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think when you're in a relationship, whether you're a male or a female, that person's supposed to be an add-on. And I these agree. women don't come no more. They don't cook clean, most of them, right? So I think I cook better than most women, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That I date anyway, you know what I'm saying? So you have to find your, your, your way in the house. I don't care if it's a light bill you pick up or a gas bill you pick up. I can carry, I can carry the bigger load of stuff. I can carry the, the mortgage, the car note, but you got to do something. You're not going to not cook, not clean up. <laughs> oh, you know, you got to add some value in the house, household. And for most people that's living paycheck to paycheck, a lot of times, you know, we can't talk about, we got to talk about the majority of the world. Some people, you know, I was watching the, the, the average American makes like 30 something thousand. Which is crazy. Right? So that's going to take two people to pay those bills. Of course. Right? So we live in a, in a space where the rent is going up, but the paycheck ain't going up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The food is going up, but the paycheck ain't going up. The, you know, what you got to pay for child care, I feel sorry for people that pay child care. People paying $1,000, $800 a week for child care. Not one person could do that on their own. Especially at making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year. So, in the time and the climate that we're in, we have to live off of each other and help each other build wealth. So I'm into that. But you should have a woman that's gonna help you build, and a woman should have a man that's gonna help her build. And you should come together and build something together that's really dope that can't be broken. Because I feel like a lot of relationships don't stay together because there's nothing tangible keeping them together in the first place. They don't build anything. They just live in life the rigmarole, right? She mm -hmm. come home from work. She come home from work. I take care of the kids. I go on a vacation. That's it. But it's nothing that you're building together that you got to go. You got to talk to that person. She got to talk to you. And, you, you know, she's invested and you're invested. So that keep the, that keep the relationship a little tighter. So I am agreeing. If I, if, if I got my household and, my, and I'm making enough money where women don't got to do anything, pay any bills, so be it. But I don't want to give the wrong messages out there because the majority of the people that's listening to this don't make that type of bread that could take care of a household. I think you um, kind of misunderstood my point, right? Nowhere am I saying that the woman should live in the home and not contribute anything, mm. right? Like, like you said, okay, I'm going to take care of the majority, right? I'll take care of the mortgage or the rent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You take care of the cable bill, you take care of the electric bill, uh, whatever it is. Not to mention also, I know in my past relationships, there was no such thing as her money, my money, right? It was our money. So although part of my income is contributing to taking care of the bills, right? A large part of her income is also being put into an account, right? For us, or we're talking about, yo, what are we gonna do with this money? Like, mm -hmm. how are we gonna build with this? You understand? Because once again, I think, I think that that's one of the biggest mistakes that couples make, right? If you're living under the same roof and you're sharing a life, there is no your money, my money. There isn't. Because at the end, we're building a life together. So what we should do is pool our money together, pool our resources so that we can do more. You know, so although the income that's coming from me may be taking care of the brunt of the bills, but what does that mean? So does that mean if, if I'm down to my last... I got to come to you and ask you. No, it, does, it, it really doesn't work that way because I'm using mine to take care of you. 
you know. But once again, like you said, you know, rent and uh, living expenses are going so high. A friend of mine was just looking for an apartment in my neighborhood. Bro, you know how much studio apartments are going for? Thirty-two hundred dollars. Listen, I'm a one. I'm, I'm a renter. I rent people properties. Anywhere, so yeah. anywhere between thirty-two to thirty-five hundred dollars a month for a studio apartment, a one-bedroom. Mm. Anywhere between thirty-eight hundred to forty-one hundred dollars. Yeah, sleep out. Four thousand one hundred dollars a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Mm. When when you're talking about two bedrooms, three bedrooms, you're talking about anywhere from six, six, six to eight thousand. Anywhere. From, Six to eight. You talking about anywhere from, and we're talking about Brooklyn, anywhere from fifty five hundred mm -hmm. to fifteen thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's look by the grace of God, and I thank the Lord because I'm able to not only take care of myself and handle my living expenses, but I'm also a single father and take care of my eighteen year old daughter. She's in college and take care of everything on my own. You know, 100%. and I'm I'm, I'm grateful <clears throat> to the Lord for that. God's been good to me. But um, when that woman, the day, if God feels it's fit, for that woman to come into my life, of course, like it's, it's, it's about us building. It's about us becoming one. If we're sharing a life, then that means we're sharing a life. Well, was, well this is what I want to say, too. It, it, I, I guess it's going to touch on a, a different perspective, right? Because we also not addressing the fact that in the USA right now, most women are making more than their male counterparts. So this ain't the life that we used to have back in the 80s, 70s, 60s, when the man was the sole breadwinner, right? So you have them making thousands of dollars more than their counterparts, right? A male could probably be making about 30 to 50. You have some women making anywhere from 50 to six figures, right? Mm -hmm. So now, now the, the, the dynamic has changed. And it's a better, interesting conversation. I wish we had a young lady. You might have to say that for another day, but just to touch on it a little bit. Um, when a woman is making more money now and she's the head of the household, quote unquote, now is it her responsibility to do what it is that a person who's the head of the household and making more money? Or does she supposed to be like, nah, you got to give me this because you a man? Because all the time, and I'm just asking that because I, sometimes I'll be looking at things. Back in the day, men brought the bacon home. And if that was his responsibility to take care of that house. And it should have been because he's making the majority of the money. Right? I, mm -hmm. So now if you got a woman who's making the majority of the money, how does that work? I feel, that's a, I feel that that's a very tricky dynamic. And I think that it takes a certain type of woman to exist and to thrive in that type of situation. situation. I don't think that situation is built for most women. I think most women mm. over time will begin to resent that man and eventually not respect him. Um, I think it's simply because just the way that women are wired, like, look, man, men are supposed to be providers. We're supposed to be protectors. And no woman wants to feel like she's carrying her man. Uh, I'm not saying that it's a dynamic that can't work. But once again, like, I think it takes a special kind of woman. It takes, it takes a woman who... Uh, doesn't define herself by her accomplishments, you know? It takes a woman who doesn't lead with, oh, this is what I make. It takes a woman who, what's important to her is the family unit Definitely. more than uh, where she stands. Well, also, I, I, the reason why I bring that up to how it came to my mind, my friend of mine, she has a, a, a fiancé, and um, she makes more money than her fiancé. Mm -hmm. But he can't deal with it. Mm -hmm. Like he's always like, oh, you make more money than me. There's always arguments because he feel like he ain't doing enough. He can't find nothing that's adequate to her. What she's doing, but she went to nursing and, you know, she took a whole different career path and his career is not going good. So a brother got to also be comfortable in his shoes, too. But I will say this. If you're making less money than your woman, then you got to find a side hustle. You got to hustle. Like, some dudes don't be wanting to get off their ass and go hustle but, but, but and I, do what you got to go do. You but, know what I mean? But I think it goes beyond that, right? Because the truth is, finances isn't the only way to be valuable in a relationship. Relationship, 100%. You, you know, 100% correct. You, 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 you can make sure that when she comes home, that the food is cooked, cooked, that the house is clean. You know what I mean? Because to me, it's all about making yourself valuable. You know, um, and I'm sure he's doing all of that because he's feeling insecure because one thing I know about men, and this is something that I don't think, and you know this because you're a man, 
People don't understand the feelings of inadequacy that men go through when they can't provide. Like the world beats you up and the world doesn't even understand that you've beaten yourself Self up. Definitely. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God. Th th there's nothing that hurts a man more than when he goes through hard times. times. And this 100%. is, and, and a lot of our homes, and this is what women don't understand. A lot of our homes are fatherless because of the fact that men are embarrassed, right? Because you got to think about it. When you fall on hard times, what's the first thing a woman says? Be a man. I need to go out there and find me a real man because what she's doing is she's hitting you kind of like at your, at your lowest point, man. You know, um, and when I say lowest point, I just mean she's really hitting you where it hurts because what she's doing is she's questioning your purpose. Like God put you on this earth to protect and provide. And it's like, look at you. You can't even do that. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, why am I even here? Um, I say that to say that us men... We have to stop allowing the world to make us believe that we are defined by what we can provide, right? How much we can protect. Because although, yes, that is a piece of who we are, it is not who we are. We are human just like everyone else. Everyone's allowed to make mistakes. Everyone's allowed to have a hard time, to go through hard times. But for us, whenever we go through hard times, it's like try harder. No excuses Yo, for listen, you. listen, man, you know so funny and so crazy because this bleed into my next topic. You know, I, I never forget when I, I damn near lost everything, you know. Um, you were a bum. <laughs> nah, not quite. <laughs> God is good because I never had to sleep on nobody's bed, Correct nobody's it. Correct floor. Correct that. God is great. Right? And I had to sleep on nobody's floor. I never had to beg for food a day in my life. But I remember it was a time, man, my bills was probably about thirteen dollars or $14,000 a month at the time. Mm. And I probably put away uh, maybe about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars at that time. And in two years, I wasn't making the same amount of money. And I had old Uncle Sam two hundred grand. That's a story for another day. You know what I'm saying? And um, the money was coming in, but it wasn't coming in fast enough. Mm -hmm. And I had like went into foreclosure and stuff like that. And I remember my daughter coming home from school because I used to pick her up from school. By that time, um, the school bus used to drop her. So she would come in the house and be like, Daddy, why are you home? <laughs> yo, <laughs> yo, it was one of the most heartbreaking feelings, yeah. feelings I ever had, the lowest point I ever had in my house. Because my daughter was like, yo, Daddy, why are you home? And I didn't have an answer. And I was so distraught by, by that. You were embarrassed. Like, I would literally go in my bedroom and cry at night because I was thinking about show how me, I'm going to lose the house. Show me how you cried. Shut up, man. I was, I was going to lose the house. Um, my brother had rented an apartment from downstairs and my niece lived downstairs with him. And I was like, yo, where are they going to go if I lose the house? Mm -hmm. um, so all this pressure was on me. And I remember having these pains in my side. It was like so excruciating. I had to go to the hospital. When I went to the hospital, um, the doctor said I was perfectly fine. I was in good health. But he's like, stress. your stress could kill you. Mm -hmm. Stress. And because I thought I was going to lose everything. So much so I used to go to the church. So I go to the church, just cleaning up the church because I didn't want to be home when my daughter got home. Just so I can walk in and be like, when she came in yeah, yeah. and I came home and, and she's like, came. oh, I came home from work or I came home from doing something. And I used to go clean the sanctuary at the church. I was there, I used to do pantry, clean the bathroom. And at that time, nobody really knew me like that. They even tried to kick me out of the church. Like, yo, you can't keep coming here every day. Was it Bishop that tried to kick you out? Shut up, man. It couldn't be here every day. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I remember that feeling. I never want to feel like that because I never want to be embarrassed or let down my daughter or let down my family. I can go to my Instagram. I talked about it on there, you know what I mean? Just that time period of losing everything. But I didn't lose, thank God I didn't lose everything. And um, that's this leads to a greater story. We're going to talk about some testimonials and stuff like that. Because I've been through some crazy parts and periods in my life. It's over. When God just stepped in amazingly. If, if I didn't, if I wasn't a believer, I would, I'm a believer because of how my life has turned out and it's not by happenstance and it you know one time it, you know that could be like a miracle but it happens over and over and over again for me so you know i'm a firm believer if he did it before he'd do it again so 
I've I seen, live my life by that principle. Yeah, I mean, I've seen I've seen so many um, miracles in my lifetime that I always tell people like people question if God exists, and He's as clear to me as my hand right in front of my face. One hundred percent. Um, and that's why I constantly remind people that your existence alone is proof that God has never let you down. You know, and if He's never done it before, you best believe that He's not going to stop. You know, so um, keep your faith. And uh, no matter how hard things get, keep going. And all my guys out there, to all my men, regardless of whatever the world tells you, remember, you're human. You understand? So it's okay for you to stumble. It's, a, it's okay for you to fall for a moment. You ain't got to feel like you're less than. You ain't got to feel worthless, even though the world is looking at you like you ain't shit. Because we both know a beautiful woman with nothing is still a beautiful woman, but a man with nothing is nothing. But pay no attention to the world. Keep Just going. Keep going, man. Keep pushing. Keep striving, man. You know, when you fall, get right back up, V. You know what I mean? Take that breath and get back up. You know what I mean? I fell so many times in my life. Um, I've been told so many times in my life, I ain't going to be nothing. And I was one of the people that told them that multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, nah, just keep striving, man. We got to keep striving. Keep striving for perfection. Keep striving to be the best you you can be, man. I always say don't strive for perfection. Strive for improvement, because if you're striving for, for perfection, you're never going to reach that. I'm reaching it. I don't know about this now. Well, good luck to you, God. Yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed another episode of Brooklyn Boys. Radio. Check this out. We want to shout out to Woodstack, man. They let us use their facility every week. So we just appreciate them for that. Please come out and get your fly gear and your sneakers at Woodstack. Shout yeah. out to Woodstack for sponsoring us. And, Tico! And my man Tico. You know what I'm saying? Because Tico hooking me up with, you know. You definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we see y'all next week, man. Brooklyn Boys Radio. We out. Brooklyn. Later, B. Out.